any authority to go easy on uh, the various small and medium-sized enterprises in the country. The governors were speaking at a roundtable forum held here in Nairobi. Let's listen in on that. While anti-corruption is fighting corruption by enforcement, they also participate in prevention and creation of awareness. Equally, as much as KRA is collecting taxes, they must also participate in creating businesses that can expand the tax base. So, I will really, uh, this is just a seed money from USAID, but I can see this to be expanded countrywide uh, by KRA in participating in every county to create uh, business development centers that support young people to create more businesses. Right. If we get an average success rate of um, stable SMEs in the region of 40% to 50%, we will triple the tax base of the country. But then, what is in it that can be sustainable? I think it's just not reaching out to SMEs or what we call micro, small and medium enterprises. It's not about policy. That's very important. It's not about tax. When people are making money, they pay tax. Right. Um, it's about creating an environment for any young person who wants to grow, who wants to start a business, to succeed. Now, how do you do that? That's the trickiest part of the moment. You have to go to what we call value addition, uh, aggregation of small and medium enterprises, but most of all, having the business development centers where they can reach out for information to check the demand style, to check what they have to add value, what quality assurance processes are, how to cut costs, how to keep financial statements. All right, still staying with much of succession and former Kenya Revenue Authority Commissioner General M.G. Waweru has expressed confidence in the way the country handled the COVID-19 pandemic with relation to business resilience. Speaking to KT News about his career, the now retired career manager turned author advises Kenyans to diligently remit taxes as it is the main means by which the country can avoid expensive debts. In terms of the business uh, business environment, it's a uh, it's been fairly uh, liberal. Fairly liberal people have, have always been able to do their whatever whatever business they want, the business they wanted to do. Uh, and uh, in my view, it's 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 actually quite quite uh, friendly, uh, provided you throw the line you are within the the the, the law. I I think. Uh, everybody who consumes services need to pay something back to the society. Now, the, 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 the idea is to make sure that there is a contribution for, from everybody. I mean, uh, look, if you are an employee, you pay taxes. Sure. Uh, you pay pay as you and you have no choice. Uh, and you are consuming services. If you are an employer, if you are a company, and every year you are making a loss. What? How can you explain that? How can you explain that every year you are making a loss? So the idea was to that you make a contribution to the the kit by through minimum tax. Now, it's, yes, it is. It is. It is not equitable per se uh, because it is taxing you on the on the on the on the basis or the the base of the tax is the revenue, the the sales. Uh, but then. Uh, those are the volumes we are moving. So uh, I think it has to be a balance. Everybody has to make a contribution because you are consuming services by the government. But how much should it be? I think that's something that needs to be. Great. Are there other countries perhaps that you observe that are having minimum tax? I think the idea. I think the idea came from uh, from. I think it was Egypt, if I recall well. It may not be a very good uh, country to compare ourselves with. Uh, but I think it came from the, the, those, those countries. Okay. Yeah,
All right, uh, that uh, discussion, of course, uh, being done by my colleague, Brian George Otiero. And uh, for an exclusive and extensive interview, you can catch more of this on our website. Well, speaking about uh, matters to do with taxation and uh, all this coming on the hot on the heels of the just signed uh, law that will see digital lenders being under the ambit of the Central Bank of Kenya. What are the implications so far? We've been receiving quite a number of feedback from the various digital lenders in the country and uh, my colleague uh, Brenda Kirubo has been on this story and uh, good to see you Brenda. Perhaps uh, what do we know so far in regards to the roadmap and the implementation uh, journey towards having all digital lenders under the central bank? Uh, good afternoon, Abi. Of course, some reactions from the digital lender players, and they're saying uh, they've actually welcomed the move.